listen to the vibes. Welcome, everyone. Yes, it is another episode of Listen to the Vibes, and I am so privileged to be sitting here talking to Mr. Chris St. John. How you doing, Mr. St. John? I'm, I'm doing well. I'm ready to come to Texas. As I was telling you, you know, people would, they really want to, to know who I'm talking to. So tell us about where you're from, uh, where you grew up all the things that you've been doing all these years and how you got to where you're at right now. So I'm going to leave it to you. I'll try to give you the Reader's Digest version. (laughs) Uh, I grew up in Bayport on Long Island to a, uh, you know, a modest uh, middle income family. And I, I uh, worked a lot of jobs and paid my way through college and law school and um, got married, had a son. And in the interim, I had uh, done an internship in the State Department. I worked at the Reagan-Gorbachev Summit. I studied and taught in China for a semester. Um, I worked for a congressman for about four years. Um, And then I went back to law school and I opened my practice, hung out a shingle. And now we have uh, four attorneys and four staffers. And uh, so we've grown that business over the last 26 years. I, I was a judge for 12 years and a prosecutor for four. But I followed my passion, um, and now I'm making music. I want to live life to the fullest, and uh, as we I talked you. before, you know, I had a uh, at one point a near death experience, and ever since then, I sort of felt like um, not afraid to, to go after anything. I was a music lover since I was five. I was hooked on the Beatles, and I started writing songs at seven. Uh, I I didn't write anything serious until I got a guitar at around fourteen, and you know, I was self-taught. I always had a, a voice that um, was just a, just naturally sort of uh, soothing and um, and also emotive. It, it sort of, um, I think it lets the listener know what I'm feeling inside. And um, that's a God-given uh, gift that, that I yes. have. Yes. Uh, I wasn't classically trained to sing. Um, and I, I have a, the ability to to take the things I'm feeling and ex- and the the events that are going through, and to put them to a, a song, um, and that's the the real gift that I've been given um, to be able to, to to do that. This album is autobiographical. Um, it yeah. talks about you know the good times and the bad. Um, it talks about the death of my parents, uh, uh, DNA discovery that I. Uh, I came across is in one of the songs, my near-death experience that talks about, um, you know, loss and love. And even though parts of it might sound sorrowful, the chords that I chose and the message that I always end on is hope and perseverance. I don't think I've written a sad song that doesn't end up there. You, You got a Grateful Dead song on there too, right? Yeah, well, that's actually, I think it's an old Scottish traditional song, but uh, Jerry Garcia and the Grateful Dead made it quite famous. Um, I don't know why I decided to put that on the album. Um, we did a cover of Ripple, and, you know, I, I yeah. think in order to in order to, to put out that on an album, I'd have to, have to go through hoops to, to talk to two estates, uh, Hunter and Garcia, so... I put this traditional song on. I like the way I, that I could pick that song. I, I play that myself, the guitar on that. And, and I love the song. It tells a great story. And I love to sing it. So oh, it's said, beautiful. It on there. Yeah, it, it's beautiful. You did a great job on that. I definitely want to hear about your charity. And yeah. uh, we will at, we will put that in the description on how to, to give to the charity. So I'm going to let you go. Well, let, me, let me just... Uh, tell you the things that I that I, the way that I am is not by accident I had two of the best parents that any boy could ever ask for um, <clears throat> I fought in World War II and uh, taught me how to love my country and um, love God with my mother um, their names were Harold and Loretta and so there came a point in time in my life where I wanted to give back to other kids to the extreme poor, uh, those without a chance. And I thought, well, I can't raise all these kids. And most of them were in Africa. And then we've been to Central America and, and also to uh, Haiti. But um, 
what I wanted to give them was an opportunity, good health and an opportunity to get an education. So our first couple of trips um, were to Zambia, where we would go out into the bush, we'd drive five hours in the middle of nowhere, where all these kids lived alone um, with just a few village elders who survived the AIDS epidemic. And they would just come from miles around. We treated them for all kinds of maladies. And uh, we gave them dental care, the first dentist they'd ever seen. We, we tested them for malaria, treated them for malaria. Um, we, we expanded our efforts to, to bring some doctors from Argentina to do cataract surgeries for the older folks who couldn't see anymore, um, and a general uh, surgeon. Um, we uh, put in an irrigation system at one village with a cistern so they could grow their own crops. We just kept on thinking of new ideas on, on how we could help them. And so one of the things I think you'll find interesting is in, in Zambia and other countries, the kids are allowed to go to school. They have a public school, but they can't go without a school uniform. Mm -hmm. And they can't afford a school uniform. So we bought thousands of school uniforms and handed them out to these kids so that they could go to school. So when I look back on my life, I think that I'll be most proud of the, of, of, of the fact that um, I did my best to help as many people as I could. And the, 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 the charity is named after my parents, Harold and Loretta, Halo Missions, H-A and L-O. Uh, it's at www.halomissions.org for anyone who's interested. Um, we've been to El Salvador uh, three or four times helping young, young people there in a, in a hospital um, and throughout the orf there's a number of orphanages that we've helped quite a bit. I, I, I was speaking to one of the ladies who ran one and um, so the kids didn't have milk so I just said well I had a, 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 an interpreter with me I said do you know a farmer and he said sure is to get him on the phone and ask him how much he'll sell us a cow for and a uh, milking cow. And he told me and I met his price and the next day a cow was, was coming onto the property and we've since given him some pigs and goats and chickens. Man. Okay, something else that I want to bring up because uh, it's something we both went through. Uh, substance abuse and getting getting past that and of course we got to talk about your horses man i know you're pa passionate about that so i'm gonna let you tell that story yeah, you know uh when i was younger uh one of the ways that i made money was being a bartender mm -hmm. and when you're a bartender um you you sort of pick up drinking um it's part of the culture mm -hmm. and i when i went to law school and became a lawyer there's a lot of stresses and i got to the point where i just I'd had enough and um, I gave it up. Um, I had a two year old at home and um, I could never just have one. I'd say, I'm going to have one tonight. I go home and have three, four, or five. And I just said, I'm not going to live life like this. So I prayed on it and I went to some meetings and got sober. And um, it changed my life. I wrote a song about it on the album called I Called You Rose. I wrote it while we were recording the album. Most people think it's a love song, but it's uh, it's about putting drinking. I called you Rose. I called you Gold. I called you Whiskey. I called you my friend. You made me happy till you made me cry. Pray I'll never see you again. It's about booze. And um, so, yeah, that, that 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 was a big turning point in my life. I think I thank God for that. Um, the horse, the horse story. Uh, you know, during COVID. There was a time uh, I was in a bad frame of mind. I had laid off uh, seven employees and uh, you know, I kept their health coverage because I wanted them back. Um, but it was a tough time. And I, I told my wife, I need some time to clear my head. And, uh, so I, I went on a cattle roundup. I had found a love for horses out in Jackson Hole at one point. And I went on a cattle roundup to Bighorn Mountain. It was a, it was a real cattle roundup. Uh, and there were five of us, uh, 12 hours a day in the saddle, punching 650 cattle down Bighorn Mountain for six nights and uh, seven days. And um, 
uh, the third horse I, I rode, I just fell in love with him. And I named him Reagan after President Reagan. And I brought him, I, I got a deal with the, with the rancher and I sent him home. And he's just what, what the doctor ordered. I mean, if you're around horses and you love them, um, they are, they're very relaxing and they bring so, so much joy to your life. It was yeah. like, it was a gift, another gift that God gave me. A horse is, is, is one of the greatest creatures on earth and uh, all different personalities. And when things are going right the way they should, your the rider and the horse are, are at one, are one, one, one being and you're in, you're connected. Um, you know, I came home, I wrote a, a song called I, I need a horse and I had it produced. And I, I love the way it came out. So I kept going and wrote the, I wrote the album. I had old songs I'd written, put it together. But without my horse, there'd be no album. So uh, kudos to Reagan. And, uh, you know, but I think that there's just, there's just nothing like a horse. My, I tell my wife I'm a cowboy. I bought some cowboy boots and a hat. And she said, you're not a cowboy. You're from New York. And I said, look, I've been on a cattle roundup. I I I, uh, I own a horse and I've been thrown off a horse. I'm a cowboy, so uh, I'm, I'm probably one of the few New York cowboys. But uh, I, I'm I believe I am. Oh well, you know maybe not in Long Island, but New York <laughs> they've got their their cattle ranches, they've got their farms they, and stuff. They do need, yeah, there is some beautiful land in certain parts of New York, but yeah, that's for sure. Everybody always associates New York City as being all of New York, and it's just not that way. No. no there's some beautiful places to substate. Oh, yes. So, you planning on going on tour? Well, we've been climbing the charts. Uh, luckily, we. For, I called you Rose, went to number three on the indie charts in Europe, and number eight worldwide. And second release, I'd send you my heart um, in two weeks shot from number 47 down to 11. So um, seems like whatever we're putting out, people are, are responding to. We have a few country songs on the album we want to put out. And there are other singles as well. I think there's about six singles on the album out of 15 that, that I think you could consider singles. Um, we want to see where we get the most response and then go there to play. We have a band we put together um, we've been doing video um, performances, live performances of, our, of the songs that are on the album. And they're, they're going up one at a time on my webpage, www.chrisstjohn.com. Um, those are free to look at. You can buy my album or uh, digitally or the, the real CD or any of the uh, shirts and hats that are up there and jackets. Um, but uh, it's uh, it's been quite a ride. I think we'll tour when we know who wants to hear us the most. When you finally depart from this earth, what is the the legacy that you want to be known for that you leave behind? Oh, I'd like to be known as a um, as a person who uh, really loved my God and my country, and who was a good husband and father and who did the best he could and um, who helped as many people as he could. Can you talk about your near-death experience? Sure I can. I fell off the wagon and I aspirated. I wound up in the hospital and I was, uh, the odds were stacked against me, totally. I mean, my organs were shutting down and nobody thought I had a chance. And there was a prayer chain that was set up. Excuse me. That's all right. Take a moment, man. It was a prayer chain set up. And uh, I came out completely fine. Nothing wrong. Um, you know, after being in a coma for three days. So that's why I started my charity and why I want to give what I have left. I don't want to leave anything, anything on the table. Power of prayer, man. Power of prayer. That's the first interview got me to tear up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, usually they do that when they know they have to talk to me. So, <laughs> oh, I appreciate that, man. I really enjoy talking. And I'm going to pick you up on that barbecue if we, we tour Texas. 
Well, we'll definitely exchange information then because uh, you're you're very welcome here. Thank you so much. Well, I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. And thank you for opening up to us. That that means a lot. I never told that story to any other interviews. So there you go. Wow. Well, it's much appreciated. I think people need to hear things like that. Thank you. Honestly. Well, anyway, as I said, thank you. I want to thank everybody that watches our, our show or listens to it on the podcast. Without your support, we wouldn't be here. Mm-hmm.